Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Sports Show. I'm your host, Robert. All right, WWE SummerSlam happened on Saturday night, Monday Night Raw last night. I haven't actually watched Monday Night Raw yet, uh, but we're going to look at just SummerSlam. Overall, I thought it was a really, really good show. Um, now, I do want to point out one thing here. Um, I go to, to Cage Match and get a lot of the stats and stuff. And Cage Match reported the attendance at 55,858. They reported on the on Peacock at 57,791. And so I want to see what other attendance figures are out there because it's kind of unique to me for them for there to be multiple reports of attendance out there. All right, so it looks like a couple of them are saying the same. The WWE announced. So I thought, thought it was kind of unique when I pulled that up and immediately it uh, says something different. Like here's one that says uh, they now, I don't know if that was last year, 23. Uh, let's see what this one says. Yeah. So those sites are saying typically the same as what WWE reported. So okay. Anyway, so we had the theme song was Liar by Jelly Roll, which I actually kind of enjoyed that. So we had Michael Cole, Pat McAfee, and Corey Graves on commentary. First match, we had the WWE Women's Title, World Title Online Champion Liv Morgan taking on Mommy Rhea Ripley with her, uh, with Dirty Dom, or as Liv calls him, Daddy Dom. This whole love triangle has been kind of interesting to see what they've done with it, why Rhea was out hurt, and to bring it back. Uh, and kind of keep it going here when she got back and having that little twist with Liv. The fact that they started the match, this match off with three short line, short, um, short line clotheslines by Rhea on Liv, and then Rhea's shoulder gets dislocated and she literally has to jam it through the announce table to get uh, get, get it back into place. That looked like it hurt, but to, to have Liv go over here and just having Liv hit the DDT in the chair after Dom threw the chair in there and, you know, Liv getting the chair to start out or Rhea having the chair and, dirt, and Dom taking it away from her. And then the chair comes into place, and then it's like, why are we doing this? I wish they would have just done the chair spot and had Liv DDT Rhea on the chair. And then, so basically you have Dom cost Rhea, but leave Dom with Rhea for now and continue the storyline. But go ahead and just flip it that, that quick and have Dom leave Rhea and go with Liv. I was like, eh. I'm cool with it because of the way the story's been told so far, um, but having them kiss on the outside and just seeing Damian Priest go to the clubhouse like, I'm going to kill him, I'm going to kill him, I'm like, oh my god, and just seeing the whole Judgment Day just implode on itself, um, that's one of, the, one, of the, one of the biggest remembrance from SummerSlam is watching <laughs> Judgment Day just implode on itself. Uh, I give the match three stars with Liv retaining her WWE Women's World Title. Obviously, we know we're going to get more Rhea Liv. We know Dirty Dom's involved now. So does Damien just become Rhea's boy toy, or how? You know, where are we going to transition this? And I actually see this ended up as a intergender tag match with Liv and Dom versus Rhea and um, whoever. Could be Carlito, could be Balor, could be one of them. We do have bad blood coming up. So I think we build a lot of stuff here. We're going to get a lot, some of these rematches at bad blood in October. Um, so next up we have the U.S. title line. Oh, sorry, the Intercontinental title line. Champion Braun Breaker taking on... Sorry, Champion Sami Zayn taking on Braun Breaker. Five minutes and 42 seconds to rip the title away from Sami Zayn. We kind of knew it was going to happen. If I had done a preview, I'd have, I would, would have literally would have said, Dom cost Rhea, Braun annihilate Sammy. I would have called these two. Um, the fact that he hit that spear 
do that bounce off the rope into a spear and just literally cut Sammy in half. Um, overall, the match was like, eh, nothing, just, it was more, just all of Braun's power is more what it was about. And Sammy kind of never really got off the ground. Five minutes, 42 seconds, uh, new Intercontinental Champion, Braun Breaker. I think Braun's going to take the Intercontinental title and he's going to turn it what it was, the, the quote, workhorse title. If you remember back in the day when Brett and Owen and Sean, Tripp and those guys had the IC title, they used it as a platform to build themselves up. They used it as a platform to make themselves into main eventers. I think Braun's going to do that and give it two and three quarter star. Uh, next up, WWE United States title online champion Logan Paul taking on L.A. Knight. I love the back and forth of what they've done here. I love the fact that you had this match start before the match. Technically, they were fighting on the outside. You had them both doing big high-risk maneuvers off the top rope. You had Logan Paul doing springboard clothesline from the apron. You had MGK get involved. You had the prime drink stand getting involved like it always does. But you really kind of widen the match out besides just the two wrestling in the ring, which I think you still could have done because Logan Paul is talented enough. We've seen enough of Logan Paul that a true just wrestling match would have worked here. Uh, but having LA Knight with everything in the news about Logan Paul and the fact that Logan Paul got booed in Cleveland. I think they did the right thing by getting the title onto LA Knight, which we kind of knew it was time. I thought WrestleMania was time for LA Knight, but um, having him hit the BFT there to get that victory, super awesome to see a guy like LA Knight with the title. I think, yeah! I think, obviously, we know that's caught on with the fans. We know the fans are behind him. At least they did it before it got stale. In the past, we know WWE has done that. They've waited till things were stale before they pulled the trigger on a title like this. Um, probably should have done it at Mania, but I like the fact they did it here. I don't know if they're going to keep seeing Logan Paul, and maybe he's one and done. And I know he owns Prime, and they had the Prime vehicle involved. I kind of thought those kind of stories were kind of neat to tell. We'll see where this goes if Logan comes back or if he's done. Uh, but Ellie Knight, your new United States champion. I get this match three and a half. But hell, Logan Paul's a hell of a good wrestler. Uh, next up, we have the WWE Women's Title Line champion Bailey taking on Nia Jax. So far, we don't, we've had two out of three title matches change hands. So that's unlike a WWE show typically. You don't have that many titles, boom, boom, changing hands. Um, I liked it. And we had this match. Nia coming out, the fact that she missed the leg drop. You had Bailey doing the Bailey to Belly suplex like she always does. You had her actually Nia on the top rope, Bailey getting up and going over there and picking her up and slamming her. But then you had Tiffany come out and act like she was going to cash in after Nia Jax giving her that new briefcase and Nia and Tiffany being friends and Tiffany telling Nia, I'm not going to cash in on you. But they use that as a distraction for Nia where, we, where Tiffany had the referee with her. They're talking to the, the referee in the match and then Nia ended up hitting the two big bombs on her in order to get the victory there. So it was like then you have the two of them celebrating the ring. It's like you you, you act like you're going to do the cash in, but they're, they're friends. And I have bought a new briefcase for Tri uh, Tiffany Stratton. Does tip is is it best for Tiffany to cash in on Nia? I don't know if it is or not, or at least yet. I think Tiffany needs to hold the briefcase for a while. I think she needs to build it up. Maybe do fake cash ins, or maybe just come out with a referee to watch the match and not even do a cash in. Kind of like since Tiffany is so I'm going to say green to WWE main roster at least. You need to do the initial money in the bank what Edge did. He just kind of after a while just let it be. And then all of a sudden cash in it. So it's like the way people forget about it. You forget Tiffany has it. 
I mean, let's leave it in the back. Don't even, don't even bring it out. Don't even talk about it. Just let people forget all about it and be like, oh crap, she does have it, and have her cash in. Uh, but I ended up giving that match a uh, three-star with Nia getting the victory there. So three of the four matches, title matches, three of the four title changes. Oh, sorry. Four straight title matches, three of the four title changes. Next up, we had a very special match. We had the special referee, Seth Rollins, um, Drew McIntyre taking on CM Punk. <laughs> the fact that Rollins was letting everything just go sometimes. Just go kill each other. I don't care. I love it. And that's all, that's all a referee should be. That's all a special referee especially should be. Just let shit go. Whatever. Kill each other. I don't care. And they were literally doing it. And just watching this feud over the last eight, almost eight months, seven months, from Rumble till now, um, Drew hurting Punk in the Rumble, and then Drew costing Punk. I'm sorry, Punk costing Drew, what, four matches, three matches? Every time Drew turned around and was getting some momentum, Punk cost him the match. Cost him the title after title after title. And then Punk steals, you know, attacks him at Chicago and steals the bracelet that meant the world to him. What I would like to see happen here now, now that Drew has the... I love how Punk takes the... the uh, uh, takes the bracelet and then Drew gets it back at the end of the match. Now you need to have Drew make a copy and just annihilate Punk somewhere, backstage or wherever, and just have it all just in pieces and just drop it like on, like in his mouth almost. And so it's like just a whole completely disrespect and then have him the next night, next Monday night on Raw come out in the ring and say, I have the real bracelet right here. If you're man enough, come get it. You know, that kind of deal. Um, but yeah, watch these two just tear each other apart. Drew going over, I like that. Drew getting that bracelet back, I like that. We keep that story going. We know we're going to see more of this. Bad Blood's coming up. This is a perfect match for a Hell in the Cell at Bad Blood. Punk, McIntyre, Hell in the Cell. Just let them just annihilate one another. Or even last man standing. You, know, you could do things and build upon it. You know, you don't have to go straight to Hell in the Cell. You can do a last man standing and put off doing a Hell in the Cell. You could even do something at War Games where you have Team Drew versus Team Punk. And do a couple, do a War Games match out of it. You know, that kind of thing. And just kind of keep the feud going for a while. But Drew getting the victory there, I ended up giving it three and a half. Uh, next up, the WWE World Heavyweight Title Line champion Damian Priest taking on Gunther. Gunther. The term transitional champion. I like the fact that we had King of the Ring, Queen of the Ring come back, Nia winning Queen of the Ring, Gunther winning King of the Ring to get the title shots at SummerSlam. I like that. That's something they used to do back in the day, and everybody loved it. We know King of the Ring sparked. You know, Austin 316 says, I just whooped your ass. Now, the fact that we have the title on Gunther, let's step back with Gunther character, Walter. Big, big band Walter. If you go back in wrestling lore and look at what Walter slash Gunther has done, some of the matches he's had, he was a bigger dude at one point. We know he ended up losing the weight. Um, WWE pushed him to the moon afterwards. He was the longest reigning NXT UK champion. He was the longest reigning Intercontinental champion. Now he's WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I would like to see him hold this title and beat Roman's record. Or when it's when he's close to beating Roman's record, do Roman versus Gunther right around the anniversary when he would beat the record. I think that would be a freaking awesome storyline to do. Just have him just, just hold the title for, you know, whatever that is, three years. And then, you know, plan it out and say, okay, you know, whatever show that would be, whatever date that would be, I'd have to do the math. He holds the title till then, has a ma ma match against Roman. When he beats Roman at that match, he is the official, the longest reigning champion in WWE modern, modern history. Boom, there you go. But, no, it's a good decision here, putting the title on Gunther. The fact that you had Finn Balor get involved. You had... 
you know, I mean, Priest had his big moves. Obviously, he had the he had the broken arrow on Gunther, the chops, the fact that Damien chopped Gunther after Gunther had that big match with Sheamus, I think it was, where he was already kind of cut up a little bit, and then Damien hit him and he starts bleeding from the chest. When have you ever seen somebody bleed from the chest? Um. Yeah, I mean, you don't see stuff like that. Oh, the match was Balor. My bad. So, yeah, you don't see stuff like that anymore. And just having blood running down his stomach, it's like, that was just, just added to the story of how hard these two hit each other. But having Gunther, when he hit the move, when, when Priest hit the move on him, and Gunther rolled, I don't know if he was pushed by Priest or if he did it on his own, rolled toward the ropes. And, and I noticed that, and then Bull Ray talked about that and busted off a little bit, the psychology of that. You would roll to the center of the ring. If you're a priest, you're going to roll him to the center so he can't get his foot on the ropes. But I even, I thought the same thing when, when Bully just said it on the radio. When he rolled, when Gunther rolled to the ropes, you knew Balor was standing there. I'm like, shit, Balor's getting involved. I thought Gunther was going to put his leg up on the ropes and Balor's going to try to push it off. But to, have, to watch Balor put his leg, Gunther's leg on the rope. And then Priest, and the referee calls, and Priest is looking around like, well, and he looks up at the, at the big screen, and they show the replay of it, and Priest just turns and looks at Balor. It's like, oh, boy, this is getting ugly now. But now that we've seen the Judgment Day just implode with that, and then what Dom did, it's just like, whoa, where, what are we doing here? Um, he knew he knew as soon as that happened, Gunther Gunther was winning. Which hey, I'm all for it. I think he's going to be a great champion. I think he's going to lead Raw into the Netflix era. I think what we're going to see on Raw the rest of this year in USA and the next year on Netflix could rival what we saw back in the Attitude Era, and that's good for wrestling. The stronger Raw, SmackDown, NXT, God forbid I say it, AW. TNA, New Japan, the stronger these companies are, the stronger the business of pro wrestling, the stronger a GCW, a Beyond Wrestling, is going to be. Because you have wrestlers who leave these big companies, for whatever reason, and they ended up, you know, at a GCW, Jinder Mahal, a um, Reggie, or you have a Matt Cardona who may get back to WWE, you have the Hardy Boys and TNA. You have these guys and you have the relationship with TNA and NXT right now. You have the AW New Japan CMLL relationship. You have the TNA AAA relationship. You have wrestlers like Speedball Mike Bailey. You have Nick Nemeth who are going from company to company on the independent scene. You have a guy like a Nick, a Nick Nemeth who, Dolph Ziggler, former WWE guy, WWE champion, he's now in the TNA. He's now on the independents doing things, helping Revolver. You got Swerve Strickland wrestling as AEW World Heavyweight Champion wrestling in House of Glory. That is when wrestling is at its best. And that's that's the era we're going into as we leave 24 into 25. Um, but excited to see Gunther as champion. Four star match here. Then our main event, we had WWE title on the line. Blood Nine Rules. Cody Rhodes defending the title versus Solo Sequoia. Solo coming out. Solo. Well, that's the bloodline. But we know the bloodline's always around. Having the bloodline come out, or start, before the match even started, you had Arn Anderson backstage talking to Cody. We knew the relationship between Arn and Cody in WWE, in AEW, back in WWE. We knew the relationship between Arn and Dusty. And I thought that was kind of a cool factor there. I know there's some stuff online about him leaving AEW, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing, back in the Attitude Era, the greatest era of wrestling, we know wrestlers jump from WCW to WWF back and forth. We know since then wrestlers have shown up on TNA, Ring of Honor, AEW, WWE, which has always been in this business. They move around. That's great. Great for Ron Anderson. Great for that spot, you know, having him backstage there. Um, but yeah, then having Solo come out without the bloodline, then the bloodline coming out and getting involved. The fact that Arn told Cody, 
you know they have your back. So we knew when the bloodline got involved, we knew they would, that Cody would have people there to help him. Kevin Owens, Randy, and then Jacob Fatu come out. And then what I didn't like about the end of this, match-wise, I think it told a story that Solo, as the tribal chief, needs the bloodline to help him. He's not big enough on his own to beat a Cody like a Roman is. Roman didn't need the bloodline to help him win. He used the bloodline to help him win. I knew all along Cody wasn't losing this match. You're not putting the title on Solo. No way. Did I foresee Roman coming out and spearing Solo? Nope, didn't see that. That wasn't on the bingo card. What I had on the bingo card was Roman coming out, trying to help Solo, Cody getting the victory, Roman going to Solo and say, look, with the bloodline, with my help, you couldn't beat Cody. You're not tribal chief material. I'm back. But to have him blatantly go out and spear Solo, it's like, whoa. Bad blood, Solo, Roman, book it now. War Games. OG bloodline with Roman versus Solo in the new bloodline. Book it now. Um... But yeah, seeing how all that went, to, went down, and then you had the Bloodline fighting Randy and Kevin. You had this whole thing with Roman out there. Cody's just laying there. Solo's laying there for a little bit. Cody's laying there for a little bit. Cody got involved, or Solo got involved a little bit. The match literally paused, took care of all this other business, and resumed the match to get the victory with Cody hitting... Um, his move and getting the victory. I was just like, okay, why, why are we doing this? Um, I give it three and a quarter. So match quality wise, it wasn't there. Storyline wise, yeah, we told a lot of story there. We build up a lot of story for the next paper, next premium live event. Um, but we know, hey, we Roman's back. He ob obviously he had that kind of, it's like tip to cap, but kind of had that respect factor for Cody. So we kind of like, okay, there's going to be a little respect there for those two. So, but you know what? We have a lot going on with Battle on Berlin, and then we have Bad Blood. So we have a lot to build to here for WB. So can't wait to see Raw this week, SmackDown. We know NXT is going to CW next month. We're going to have the two big shows, one in St. Louis with Randy, one in Chicago with CM Punk. By the way, those are head-to-head -head with AW because AW will be on Tuesday because of Major League Baseball playoffs. Don't tell me again, anyone, that NXT doesn't look at AEW, or WWE doesn't look at AEW's competition, because why would you put CM Punk on NXT, Randy Orton on NXT, to go head-to-head -head versus AEW if you don't look at them as competition? Yeah. They don't look as TNA as competition, so they're working with it. They don't look at any other independent company as competition. They do look at AEW competition. Trust me. But anyway, that is SummerSlam 2024. Thanks for watching. It was a great show, Robert Sports Show, from the independent scene to the main event of WrestleMania. Don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader's sports channel content.